Juvenile salmon are a key link in the life cycle of salmonids. As with any species, juveniles are the start of the next generation. For fall run Chinook salmon, they'll migrate out to the ocean and they'll spend anywhere from two to five years in the ocean. This is why we need to monitor over multiple years so that we can encompass what happens from the juvenile life stage all the way up to the adult life stage. It's really important for us to be able to come up with an accurate count of the number of salmon that are being born or hatched and migrate out to the ocean each year. My name is Tyler Pilger. I'm a fisheries biologist and I study the life cycles of fish. For over 20 years, Fish Bio staff have been monitoring juvenile fall run Chinook salmon in the Stanislaus River. One of the challenges we face is the fact that there could be hundreds of thousands of fish migrating through a section of stream and it's nearly impossible for us to capture and count every single one of those. And so what we have to do instead is collect a sample. So we monitor juvenile salmon using a piece of equipment called a rotary screw trap. In order to estimate the size of the population, we first have to estimate how many fish the trap is catching relative to the total number of fish that are out there. That's what we call the trap efficiency. In order to get the efficiency, we have to perform mark recapture releases. That's where we catch a bunch of fish, we'll mark them, and we'll release a known number of fish upstream of the trap and count how many get recaptured. Once we know the trap's efficiency, we use that efficiency value to expand our sample into a total population estimate. We recently published a paper where we looked at all the long-term data that we've collected and essentially looked at ways in which we can improve our monitoring program. We've published this paper in San Francisco Estuary and Watershed Science. When calculating an abundance estimate, there's a couple of statistical methods that treat the results of those trap efficiency tests a little bit differently. So our goal was to take these 20 years of data and recalculate the abundances that we've had using these different methods. Our logic here was that if these different approaches came up with very similar abundance estimates, that would give us more confidence in that particular year's abundance. Confidence being how certain are we that that value we come up with is the true number of fish that are out there. So this also allowed us to look at our field protocols in those years where we had high confidence in our abundance estimates and see what we could do to improve our estimates. Our analyses found that in order to get the best or have the most confidence in our abundance estimates, we needed to begin our monitoring at the very beginning of the migration season. So the sooner we could be out there monitoring fish, the better our estimates would be. And then also performing more trap efficiency tests during those times of peak migration when the majority of fish are moving through the system. Long-term monitoring is incredibly important because we never know what a population is gonna be doing. So we need to look at the trends or what they're doing from one year to the next. So are they increasing or are they decreasing? This is especially important for adaptive management in regulated rivers where water has to be used for both people and fish. Our hope is that other researchers can use the findings of this paper in order to critically evaluate their own monitoring programs. And this way we can all be continually updating and improving the ways in which we count fish. Thank you.